Hey, this is Mark Moore, aka Tuxedo Mark at various places on the internet. It's 3.08 p.m. according to the computer clock on Wednesday, June 12, 2013. And, uh, this is kind of an addendum to my, uh, time travel in Star Trek, um, thing. I realized just a few minutes ago that I forgot to discuss Enterprise. Okay, Enterprise. Um, despite it being s uh, um, announced as a prequel series, it involves time travel in a big way. Uh, they introduced this thing called the Temporal Cold War, starting in the first steps of the series. There's this race called the Sulaban that have been genetically enhanced, and they are taking orders from a mysterious, shadowy figure from the distant future. Okay? It is under his orders uh, that the Sulaban's actions in the first episode, Broken Bow, in the pilot, causes a Klingon ship to crash on Earth in a town called Broken Bow and basically it initiates first contact between uh, Earth and the Klingon Empire. Okay, uh, if you recall in an episode of uh, The Next Generation, uh, I think it might have been First Contact, I'm not sure, where Picard says that disastrous First Contact with the Klingons led to war. Um, now, this does not happen, as shown on Enterprise. The thing is, for, first of all, not only is First Contact initiated with the Klingons, um, the Enterprise NX-01 under Captain Archer has to launch early, um, three days early, I believe, and he has to get Dr. Phlox just as a fill-in because the doctor that he was going to have uh, wouldn't be available. Now, you could wonder just how much of what we see on Enterprise is anything close to what the original history was. Um, the only clue, believe it or not, is in the fourth season episode, In the Mirror Darkly, Part 2. Uh, that's where um, Mirror Archer is reading biographies, like historical biographies, of the NX-01 crew members from the original universe. He looked it up on the uh, Defiant, I believe it's called the Defiant, yeah, the, uh, the Constitution class ship from the original series. Uh, the explanation here is that when it disappeared in the Tholian web, it was sent to the Mirror Universe and also thrust back in time. So presumably, it co its computers contain the original history, you know, from the TOS era, uh, unaltered at all by any of the subsequent time travel that went on in the normal universe. So we know for a fact that Archer did command the Enterprise NX-01 and Hoshi was the linguistics officer. Anything else? Who knows? Um, but yeah, so they meet the Klingons. I guess they kind of make a favorable or at least indifferent first impression. Um, but then the, the Temporal Cold War continues on. And then at the end of like season three with, with the... Uh, with the alien Nazis, it's like, geez. and and they and they go back to the 1940s and 
I mean, when Star Trek Nemesis came out in 2002, Enterprise was like midway through its second season. So, we know that the next generation crew still existed at that point. Uh, and that's about it. <laughs> um, but then, Enterprise continued on for another two and a half seasons, and there was time travel. There were alterations. There, there was the episode where Earth was destroyed, and then at the end of it, oh, it, it never happened. Um, the one permanent thing was the uh, the attack on Earth, um, where it's like there, there's this huge line of destruction going down the east coast of the U.S. Uh, they even focused on uh, Sarasota, Florida, destroyed, obviously. Uh, th that has huge ramifications as far as history goes. It's like 9-11, but on a much, much larger scale. It's like, jeez. I mean... Think thinking about all of that, how, how can we be sure that that uh, any, anything else uh, that we saw in previous series happened? Um, we know from Deep Space Nine's tri uh, trials and tribulations that the original Tribbles episode was left mostly unaltered by the time that the Deep Space Nine crew visited. The only difference apparently being that there's now a new panel uh, on uh, one of the corridors of the Enterprise where originally there was none. Anyway. Um, yeah, but then Enterprise did all this, all, all this weird stuff, and we didn't see the 24th century. Um, only with 2009 Star Trek did we learn that Spock had still called the Romulus, and you know, that, that stuff stayed the same. Um, Yeah, it's like uh, Enterprise uh, could have messed up a lot of stuff. We, we just don't know. But now, obviously, the uh, the new films have have ba basically Enterprise and the, and the. Two new films are the Star Trek universe as it currently stands. Uh, now here's something that I had thought about back then, back when Enterprise started, and I've never seen anyone mention or talk about this. Um, some people were wondering why the episode's called Broken Bow and no other people are like, well, well, that's the name of the town that uh, that the Klingon uh, crashed in. Uh, Klang, I believe his name is. Okay, sure, but think about this. The episode involved initiates a temporal cold war. Uh, history is no longer going. On its original track, okay? It's uh, it's anything goes, basically. I think they wrote it just as an excuse to do whatever they want. Um, now, the captain of the Enterprise is Jonathan Archer. Okay? 
broken bow is double meaning. It's not just the name of the town. It means that a serious event has occurred and time's arrow can no longer fly straight. So it's up to the archer to restring the bow and make sure that time zero stays on course. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, uh, now I think I've said all that I have to say about time travel in Star Trek. Um, anyway, uh, feel free to share your comments. And uh, it's 3:19 p.m. and that's it. Thanks for watching.